Have you ever wondered who has cheated the most in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? Guess what, that was a rhetorical question, I'm gonna tell you anyways. So, I went through the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and the manga, and I took notes every time Yugi, Joy, or Kaiba cheated. And now, in this video, we're gonna go through every time they cheated, and at the end, we're gonna find out who has cheated the most. Although, spoilers, you already probably know the answer. But first, we need to establish what counts as cheating. So, here's my criteria. Number one. I'm only gonna count the duels that are canon. I define a duel as canon if it happens in both the anime and the manga. And for the duel to count, it has to happen on screen and it has to be shown in its entirety from beginning to end. Number two, the canonical duels are different in both the anime and the manga. The characters will use different cards or strategies, so for this video, I'm gonna judge the duels by how they happen in the anime. Number three, I'll be using the Japanese version of the anime because in the Japanese version, the cards have text. If the characters don't abide by the text on the cards, they are cheating. However, if the card text is too small for me to decipher, or they play a card without showing me the text, or the text is too big, then I'll use the real life card text. Number 4. If they activate a spell card as a quick play card, and the card is actually a quick play in the real game, I won't give them a point. Number 5. I won't give them a point every time they place a monster in face-up defense position, because that's just done so the duels are more visually interesting for the viewer. And finally, number 6. If they establish a rule, they have to follow that rule. Oh, and by the way, if I skip a duel, then that means that, in my opinion, no one cheated in that duel. With all of that out of the way, we can begin. The first duel is Yugi vs Kaiba. First, I want to address the summoning of his blue eyes. Despite what the meme has you believe, Kaiba summons his blue eyes legitimately. During the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, there are no tribute and mechanics. You can normal summon any monster regardless of their level. Also, Kaiba doesn't summon all of his blue eyes in one turn. Whenever he draws one, he summons it, but this takes some time. However, I am going to give Kaiba two points in this duel, because Yugi plays Swords of Revealing Light. Then, in his turn, Kaiba summons a monster and attacks, which he can do. And then, on his next turn, he summons another monster and attacks again. Next duel will be Yugi vs Weeble, but this is in Duelist Kingdom, so we have to talk about some rules in this tournament. Number one, you're not allowed to attack directly. No one ever breaks this rule, but I wanted to explain it just in case you ever wonder, hey, how come they never attack directly during Season 1? This is why. Number two, there are a bunch of dueling systems scattered across the island. Each of these machines gives what they call a field bonus to specific monsters. If your monsters applied for the field bonus, they gain 30% more attack and become unaffected by your opponent's spell cards. And rule number three, if a monster has wings, it can fly. And if a monster that can fly battles a monster that cannot fly, the monster that cannot fly loses its field bonus. So, Yugi vs Weevil. Here, I'm gonna give 3 points to Yugi because Number 1, he uses Mirror Force to reduce Weevil's life points. Number 2, Yugi draws a card in Weevil's turn. And number 3, during Weevil's turn, Yugi activates Polymerization as if it was a quick play card. Next duel is Joey vs My Valentine, and Joey gets 1 point here because he uses Time Wizard wrong. See, the text of Time Wizard is too small, I can't figure out what it says, so I have to use the real card. And the real Time Wizard card doesn't make your opponent's monsters lose attack points, nor does he special summon 1000 Dragon. Also, as a side note, Joey here is attacking all of Harpy's latest monsters at once, but in the real game there's a card called Harpy Lady Sisters, so I'm gonna pretend this is what Joey is attacking, hence why he only gets one point. Next duel is Yugi vs Mako, and here Yugi gets six points. Yeah, I know. So, in his turn, Yugi summons Giant Soldier of Stone in defense mode. Then, it's Mako's turn. Mako summons a monster and attacks. But then, still on Mako's turn, Yugi changes his Soldier of Stone to attack mode. That's point number one. Point number two, Yugi uses his non-effect monster to destroy a spell card he had on the field. Number three, the spell Yugi destroyed doesn't do what he says it does. And all of this happens in Mako's turn, by the way. But we're not done, so point number four, it's now Yugi's turn and Yugi summons Curse of Dragon, and then he activates Burning Land to make Curse of Dragon stronger, but that's not what Burning Land does. Number 5, Curse of Dragon attacks all of Mako's monsters at once, but this is a non-effect monster, it can't do that. And number 6, even if Curse of Dragon attack all of Mako's monsters at once, that still wouldn't be enough damage for Mako to lose that turn. Next is Yugi vs Kaiba's Ghost, and here I'm gonna give 4 points to Yugi, 
and one point to Kaiba. First of all, Yugi activates a trap called Spellbinding Circle and uses it to reduce Blue Eyes' attack by 700 points. But that's not what Spellbinding Circle does. This is going to come up a lot, by the way. Get hype. Second, Yugi uses Monster Reborn to summon a Blue Eyes and then he uses Mystical Elf to increase Blue Eyes' attack, but Mystical Elf doesn't have an effect. Third, Yugi uses Magical Hats. Now, here's the thing. Magical Hats has a very vague effect in the anime, so I will use the real card effect. And so Yugi gets a point here because Magical Hats should only last for one turn. Lastly, both Kaiba and Yugi get a point because Kaiba hacks the game to give the Blue Eyes Hologram a virus and Yugi takes this opportunity to win. Next duel is Joy vs Rex Raptor and here Joy gets 5 points. Number 1. So Rex Raptor has a monster on the field called Two-Headed King Rex. It's Joy's turn. Joy summons Axe Raider. And because Axe Raider applies for the field bonus, Axe Raider gains 30% more attack. And so Joy attacks Two-Headed King Rex and destroys it. But here's the thing, Two-Headed King Rex has wings. The moment Joy attacked, Axe Raider should have lost its field bonus and be destroyed. Number 2. Joy plays Time Wizard in the Spell and Trap Zone, and then he sets a monster in defense position. He's summoning two monsters in one turn. Number 3. Joy has on the field both Swamp and Lava Battle Guards. Each of these monsters gain 500 attack if the other one is on the field. Rex has a monster called Serpent Knight Dragon. Even with the extra 500 attack, Serpent Knight Dragon is still stronger, so Rex attacks, but because both Battle Guards apply for the field bonus, they get an additional 30% extra attack and so Serpent Knight is destroyed. But once again, Serpent Knight has wings, so the field bonus should have been negated. Number 4. Rex summons Red Eyes and attacks one of Joey's battle guards. The only reason why Joey doesn't lose here is because the battle guard has the field bonus giving him 30% more attack. But again, Red Eyes has wings, the field bonus should have been negated and Joey should have lost because he didn't have that much life points. And point number 5. Joey uses Time Wizard and destroys Red Eyes, causing Rex to lose life points. But once again, we are judging Time Wizard by its real defect, and the real Time Wizard does destroy the opponent's monsters, but it doesn't reduce their life points. Next duel is Yugi vs Panic, and here Yugi gets 6 points. Number 1, Yugi uses his monster to attack the darkness on the field. But the darkness comes from a monster's effect. You can attack the field. If you attack, you have to attack one of your opponent's monsters. Number 2. Yugi says that Spellbinding Circle forces Panic's monsters to attack the Reaper of the cards, but that's not what Spellbinding Circle does. Number 3. Yugi uses Swords of Revealing Light to clear the darkness on the field, but Swords of Revealing Light doesn't do this. Number 4. Panic's monsters applied for the field bonus, so they shouldn't be affected by Swords of Revealing Light. Number 5. Yugi uses the effect of Catapult Turtle and then he says that this makes his Champion Knight gain 600 attack points, but Catapult Turtle doesn't increase your monster's attack. And number 6. Catapult Turtle's effect reduces your opponent's life points, but Yugi instead uses it to destroy one of Panic's monsters. Next is Yugi and Joy vs the Paradox Brothers, and here only Yugi gets points and he gets 7 points. Because number 1, in his turn, Yugi summons Celtic Guardian, and then it's Para's turn. Para attacks Celtic Guardian with Wall Shadow, so Joy activates a trap card and changes Para's Wall Shadow to defense position. But then, for no reason, Yugi attacks Para's monsters during Para's turn. Number 2, yet again, Yugi uses Spellbinding Circle wrong. Spellbinding Circle doesn't reduce attack points. Number 3. In Joy's turn, Yugi activates Polymerization as if it was a quick play card. Number 4. Yugi uses Mirror Force wrong. Mirror Force doesn't reduce your opponent's life points. Number 5. Yugi activates Magical Hats, but once again, the anime effect of Magical Hats is too big, so I'll use the real card effect and that means Yugi is cheating because the card only lasts for one turn. Number 6. Yugi activates Mystic Box, but just like Magical Hats, the anime effect of Mystic Box is too big. So I will use the real card effect and that means Yugi is cheating because Mystic Box doesn't do what Yugi says it does. And point number 7, Yugi activates Monster Replace, also known as Shift in the real game. But this is also a card with a really big effect, so I will use the real card and that means Yugi is using it wrong. Next tool is Yugi vs Kaiba and here Kaiba gets 2 points while Yugi gets 3. Let's go through Kaiba's plays first. Number 1, Kaiba summons Sword Talker and says this monster has an ability that makes him stronger but Sword Talker is a vanilla monster with no effect. And number 2, Kaiba basically threatens with killing himself if Yugi doesn't let him win. We can all agree this is cheating. Now, for Yugi, 
Number 1, Yugi activates Monster Replace, but I'm using the real card effect here, so that means Yugi is cheating because he's using it to summon Dark Magician from his hand. Number 2, Yugi activates Mystic Box, once again I'm using the real card effect, so that's another point for Yugi because he uses it wrong. And number 3, Yugi fuses Zombie Mammoth with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and somehow that begins to weaken Blue Eyes, but A, there isn't a fusion monster between Zombie Mammoth and Blue Eyes, and B, that's not how zombie monsters work. Also, Zombie Mammoth doesn't even have an effect. Next duel is Kaiba vs Pegasus, and here Kaiba gets two points. Number one, it's Pegasus' turn, so Pegasus attacks. Kaiba then activates Mesmeric Control in response to Pegasus' attack, but unless it's a quick play card, you can't activate spells during your opponent's turn. And number two, Kaiba summons Sword Talker during Pegasus' turn. The next duel is Yugi vs Mai, and here Yugi gets two points, because number one, Yugi takes control of Harpy's pet dragon, then he summons Catapult Turtle and uses its effect to reduce Mai's life points and destroy Mai's trap card. But Catapult Turtle doesn't destroy trap cards. And number two, Yugi summons Mystical Elf and says she's unaffected by Mai's trap cards. Because she's a woman. N no. Next duel is Joey vs Bandit Keith, and here Joey gets 5 points. Number 1, Joey summons Baby Dragon and Time Wizard in one turn. Number 2, Joey uses Time Wizard, but once again, I'm judging its effect by the real card, and Time Wizard doesn't summon Thousand Year Dragon. Number 3, Joey places Copy Card, which is a monster, in the Spell and Trap zone, and then activates it like a trap. Number 4, Joey activates the Spell Card Dragon Nails, as if it was a Quick Play card. But not only that, the effect of the card says that it only works on dragons that are dark attribute. But Joey equips the card to Red Eyes Metal Dragon. Metal Dragon is a dark machine monster. And number 5, Joey activates Grave Robber to steal one card from Bandit Keith's graveyard. And then he immediately activates the card. You can't do that, especially not if the card is a trap card. And finally, last duel of the season, Yugi vs Pegasus. And here, Yugi gets 6 points. Number 1, he uses Spellbinding Circle to reduce a monster's attack points. The card doesn't do that. Number 2, he activates Magical Hats. But once again, I'm judging this card based on its real counterpart, so Magical Hats should only last for one turn. Number 3, Yugi activates Living Arrow. This card specifically allows you to target your opponent's monsters but Yugi uses it to destroy Toon World, which is a spell card. Number 4, Yugi uses Mirror Force to reduce Pegasus life points. Number 5, Yugi uses Mystic Box. Once more, I'm judging the effect of this card based on the real card, so he's using it wrong. And number 6, Yugi says that Kuribo's effect is to self-destruct. That's not true. And that's it, that's all of Season 1. We're obviously not done, but so far, the scores look like this. Y yeah. So, Season 2, also known as Battle City. Now, before we go through the duels, we need to talk about some new rules. So, Battle City for the most part, it's pretty much the same as the real card game, which means that now there are tributed mechanics. You can no longer summon high-level monsters for free. You know, it's kind of funny that Kaiba invents this mechanic, because his deck revolves around summoning high-level monsters. If anything, this rule hurts him more than anyone else, but I'm not a teenage billionaire CEO with a 300 IQ, so what the hell do I know? Now, there is one exception between the real card game and Battle City, and that is the fact that in Battle City, a fusion monster cannot attack during the turn it was summoned. Also, regarding the god cards, I have decided to let them get away with it. Whatever made up effects they give to the god cards every duel is fine, I'm gonna ignore the god cards, makes it easier for me. Now, let's get to the duels. First duel in Battle City, Yugi vs the Rare Hunter, and here Yugi gets two points. Number one, Yugi activates Time Seal to skip the opponent's draw phase, but what the card does is that it skips your opponent's next draw phase. I know, semantics, but still cheating. And number two, Yugi says that Alpha the Magnet Warrior gains attack points because of the electricity of Summon Skull, but neither of those monsters have an effect. Next duel is Joey vs Esperoba, and here Joey gets two points, because number one, Joey summons both Time Wizard and Baby Dragon in the same turn, and number two, Joey uses the effect of Time Wizard to summon Thousand Dragon, but once again, Time Wizard doesn't do this. Next is Yugi vs Arcana, and here Yugi gets six points. Number one, Yugi activates Magical Hats. Again, I'm using the real card here, so Magical Hats can only be activated during your battle phase. Also, it's a trap card, and Yugi activates it as a quick play spell. Number two, Yugi activates the spell as a quick play card. Number three, Yugi activates Monster Reborn as a quick play card. Number 4, Yugi's Dark Magician is trapped by the effect of one of Arcana's trap card. But 
because Yugi is about to lose, the hologram decides to ignore the effect of the trap card and defends Yugi. Number 5. Yugi activates the effect of Arcana's magic curtain, but that's not how magic curtain works. And number 6. Yugi uses magic curtain to summon dark magician girl but Magic Curtain specifically says its effect applies only to Dark Magician. Next duel is Joy vs Weevil, and here Joy gets 3 points. First, Joy activates Sword and Shield in Weevil's turn. Second, Weevil attacks with Insect Queen, so Joy activates Magic Arm Shield to take control of one of Weevil's monsters and redirect the attack of Insect Queen to that monster. But then, when the monster is destroyed, Weevil is the one who loses life points, However, Joy should be the one who loses life points because it was his monster during that turn. And third, Joy activates Grave Robber to steal one card from Weevil's graveyard. And then he immediately activates the card. You cannot do that unless the card is a quick play. Next duel is Yugi vs the Mime, and here Yugi gets 4 points. Number 1, Yugi activates Magical Hats. Magical Hats only last for one turn. Number 2, Yugi uses Spellbinding Circle to decrease life first attack points but that's not what the card does. Number 3, Yugi activates Brain Control from his hand. Brain Control is not a quick play card. And number 4, I am pretty sure the loop Yugi uses to beat Matic wouldn't work, because after being destroyed, Revival Jam goes to Matic's graveyard. Therefore, the effect of Brain Control is over, so now it is Matic who is in control of the card, and Revival Jam would return to Matic's side of the field. Then again, I could be wrong. I do play the real card game, but I'm not the best at it. Super technical stuff like this eludes me, so maybe I'm wrong here. Anyways, next duel is Joey vs. Mako, and here Joey gets 3 points. First, Joey activates Fairy Box in response to Mako's attack. But in the anime, Fairy Box is a normal spell card. Second, Joy activates Magic Arm Shield, and then the same thing happens again. Mako is the one who ends up losing life points, but it actually should have been Joy. And third, Joy plays an equipped spell card as if it was a quick play card. Also, he equips it to the wrong type of monster. Next is the duel between Kaiba and Yugi versus the Masked Guys. Here only Yugi cheats and he only gets one point, because he uses Mystical Wrath Panel wrong. The card targets players, not monsters. Next duel is Yugi versus Mind Control Joy, and here Yugi gets three points, because First of all, he activates Spellbinding Circle to reduce a monster's attack points. Second, Yugi activates D Spell as a quick play card. And third, Yugi activates Mystical Wrath Panel. Then he gives a friendship speech to Joy, and then he makes Mystical Wrath Panel send Meteor of Destruction to him. But that's not how the card works. Once activated, Mystical Wrath Panel will bounce the effect of one card to the other player. You don't get to choose. Next duel is Joy vs. Odeon, and here Joy gets 3 points. First, Joy activates Fairy Box in Odeon's turn, but in the anime, Fairy Box is a normal spell card. Second, Joy activates Foolish Burial like a quick play card. And third, Joey uses Grave Robber to resurrect Jinzo, but Grave Robber adds the card to your hand. Next duel is Kaiba vs Ishizu, and here Kaiba gets one point, because he activates Soul Exchange in Ishizu's turn, but Soul Exchange is not a quick play card. Then we have Yugi vs Kaiba, and here Kaiba gets two points, and Yugi gets five. Let's go through Kaiba's plays first. Number 1, Kaiba attacks with XYZ Dragon Cannon the turn he summons it. But XYZ Dragon Cannon is a fusion monster, and by the rules of Battle City, fusion monsters cannot attack the turn they are summoned. Number 2, Kaiba tributes his fusion monster to summon Obelisk, but the fusion monster should only count as one tribute. Now, let's go through Yugi's place. First, Yugi uses Life Force Sword to prevent Kaiba from summoning Obelisk. But Life Force Sword picks the card randomly. Kaiba has 4 cards in his hand. Yugi has a 25% chance of getting Obelisk. Normally, I would let the luck aspect slide, but Yugi seems to aim at Obelisk. So I'm sorry, Yugi, I'm giving you a point. Second, Yugi special summons King's Knight. Since the text was too small to read, I'll use the real card text, and that means King's Knight effect only triggers when he's normal summoned. Third, Yugi summons Red Eyes using the effect of Kaiba's Flute of Summoning Dragons, but that card clearly states that it only benefits the player who activated. Fourth, Yugi activates Spellbinding Circle to reduce a monster's attack. This is the last time he's going to use the card in canon, so no more points for that. And finally, in Kaiba's turn, Kaiba attacks with his blue eyes. Yugi then negates the attack and then destroys blue eyes by counter-attacking. That's not a thing. Next, we have the last duel in Battle City, Yugi vs. Marek. Here, Yugi gets 4 points. Number 1, 
Yugi says Fiend Sanctuary does a bunch of stuff that the card doesn't say it does. Number two, Yugi activates Monster Reborn as a Quick Play card. Number three, Yugi tributes one fusion monster as if it was two tributes. And number four, Yugi activates Magical Dimension to special summon Dark Magician, but the card only works if you have Dark Magician in your hand, and Yugi summons him from the deck. And that's it, that's Battle City. Now we skip all the way to Season 5, Dawn of the Duel. But here's the thing, the last part of the Yugi story focuses on the memories of the Pharaoh, so most of the story takes place in ancient Egypt, which means that basically there aren't any duels. There are battles, but the difference is that the characters are using actual magical powers to summon actual magical creatures. In fact, there are only two proper duels in this entire arc, Yugi Moto vs Bakora, and then the final duel of the show, Yugi vs the Pharaoh. Now, in my humble opinion, Yugi didn't cheat a single time when dueling Bakora, so that means that there's only one duel left, Yugi Moto vs Pharaoh Atem. So for this duel, I'm only gonna focus on Yugi Moto and I'll add his cheats to the final score. In my opinion, Yugi only cheats two times, both times involve using a trap card called Magnet Force. The trap stays on the field for far too long. First, Yugi uses it to reduce the attack of the god cards by bouncing the effect of Slifer, and then he uses the card again to destroy the god cards by bouncing the effect of Slifer again. And that's it. That's every canon duel in this show. Now, let's wrap this up by talking about numbers. Kaiba first. Canonically, Kaiba has 9 duels. And he cheats 10 times. Joy, on the other hand, canonically has 14 duels. And he cheats 22 times. And then, we have the man himself. Yugi canonically has a total of 21 duels. And in those 21 duels, he cheats a grand total of 64 times. All hail the king of games. I mean, we all knew this was gonna happen, right? Just by watching the show, it's obvious Yugi cheats a lot. But now we have new medical proof, I guess. Honestly, what I'm shocked about is Kaiba. When I started working on this video, I legitimately thought Kaiba was gonna end up second with the most amount of points. And honestly, I thought his score was gonna be a lot higher. But as it turns out, he's actually not that much in the canon story. Hell, in the manga, Kaiba doesn't even appear in the final arc. If it wasn't for all the filler arcs in the anime, Kaiba wouldn't be in this show as much. So, I guess what I'm saying is, thank you Yu-Gi-Oh filler, you gave us the gift that keeps on giving. With that said, I have nothing else to add, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And that was it. I was done. But it turns out I made three tiny mistakes, and I only realized while I was editing this video. The final score for everyone should actually be one point higher. Let's do this quick. First Kaiba. When dueling Ishizu, Kaiba enters battle phase with Obelisk. Then he changes his mind, summons Blue Eyes instead, and then enters battle phase again, but this time with Blue Eyes. You can't do that. So Kaiba's final score is 11, not 10. Next Joy. When dueling Mako, Joy summons Alligator Sword Dragon and attacks. But as per the rules of Battle City, fusion monsters cannot attack the turn they are summoned. So Joy's final score is 23. Lastly, Yugi. Back in Duelist Kingdom, when dueling Mako, Yugi summons a monster called Silver Fang, and then he equips this monster with the Moon card. Mako then destroys the monster, and the equip card stays on the field, but it should've gone to the graveyard with the monster it was equipped to. So Yugi's final score is 65. None of this changes anything, but since I missed 3, it is likely I missed more, but at this point I've been working on this video for almost 2 months, I am not gonna rewatch the entire anime again. The purpose of this video was to find out who cheats the most, and even if both Joey and Kaiba had 20 additional points, the answer would not change. Yugi cheats. A lot. Anyways, I wanna be done with this, so I'm gonna fade to black and end this video now. Thank you for watching, bye!